Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rental at a time. Uh, I have a special guest for you, somebody who's been on the channel many times. He is a personal friend of mine. He has helped me a ton. And he's somebody I go to because he, in my opinion, is a naturally born entrepreneur. Uh, it is a skill and experience that I'm just not anointed with. He is. So I go to him to ask questions about entrepreneurs and we're going to talk to him about what does an entrepreneur to get ready for the opportunity that is coming. Stratton, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on, Mike. Thank you for the great compliments. Yeah, it's, you've, you've changed my life uh, for the better. Uh, you've helped me in so many different ways. You allow me to look at, I mean, you, we, just naturally, you think different than me. Not better, not worse, just different. You look at a problem different. I mean, it's, it, I just loved talking to you because it allows me to see where I'm weak and where I need to grow. So uh, you've, you've undoubtedly heard me say, and I've been on your podcast every week, which thank you for that. Um, you know, we're, we're heading to, you know, the next two years are going to be very different than the next two years. I am very comfortable talking about how investors can get wealthy uh, and how really bad operators did okay the last couple of years. But you're the entrepreneur, right? I talk about winter is coming and winter is here. You run businesses. You think about real problems. You're putting real capital to work across multiple different things. So I got to ask, as an entrepreneur, when I say winter is coming, a, did you do anything different? Did you prepare? And B, now that I say winter is here, what does that mean to you? So feel free to, you know, wherever you want to go with this, I'm, I'm just going to listen. Okay. So number one, um, we cut out a lot of expenses. We, tr we did some layoffs, like we were bloated. And I just thought about getting more lean because I was all growth. Like, so like I would go and I would break even month over month, but I didn't care because I knew all of that profit was going back into things that were going to grow that company. Mm -hmm. And I was going for more. I did. I wasn't running the companies lean enough per se. Mm -hmm. Right. So we had, we're hiring on someone and I was like, you know what? Fuck it. You are going to have 20 hours of work a week, but you're going to grow into that 40 hours. And I know I'm going to need this just based off of this growth rate that we're having. Mm -hmm. And then I would take more off the other person's plate, right? And it's a little bit more of experience than like a faster growing company, right? To where I'm really labor intensive in what I do. Okay. To where like I have a hundred plus employees and it's only a couple million dollar company to where generally if you have a, if you have a hundred plus employees, I should be doing like 40 million, you know, okay. like, like just to give you perspective. So it's really high labor. And so what we did, we kind of like analyzed everything saw like, all right, who are the weak players and like, what positions do we feel are redundant? And we had an honest conversation and like, okay, those people had to go. Mm -hmm. So number one, we cut those people, leaned out and then- So, so, so let me, I just want to go back because again, I think entrepreneurs need to hear this. So r roughly speaking, right, you're, you're all gas to use an analogy, right? No break for a year or so, investing ahead, you're, you're funding it out of your pocket if you had to. But then at some point, you know, for me, I said winter is coming. I don't know what you saw in your crystal ball, but you're like, we got to get some break on this bitch, or we're gonna we're we're just we're gonna be in trouble. Uh, yeah. So so when did that kind of realization, or when did that first pop in your head that hey, we got maybe all gas is not the right strategy for what's coming? As soon as we talked about the Fed actually hiking interest rates. So this is March, maybe. Yeah, like as soon as like then I was like thinking about it. Okay. And then. I'd been like listening it? to a lot of podcasts about, because one thing that I'm really good at starting businesses, but only person who's a CEO of multiple Fortune 500 companies is Elon Musk. Right. Yeah, right. It's not right. often, yeah. It's not often. So like, who do I think I am to have a bunch of six-figure businesses that are operating mm. and I'm the CEO of all of them? Like, no, there's like no focus there. I can't push them forward. We And even you saw with the social media company, one of our operators like died or like, it was a mess. Right, right. right? right. So with okay. all those things and all those distractions going on, might as okay. well, number one, get focused as an entrepreneur, no matter what market you're in, and then cut the fat. So I did that. Okay. All those interest rates going up. And then I knew if, with that happening, I'm going to need more runway. And mm -hmm. so I need that excess capital that I was using as like, let's say, investing in these new business ventures. I need the excess capital for actual runway if anything does hit the fan. Yeah. So this is what All In Podcast calls default alive, right? Or I, as an accountant, I would call cash flow positive, right? Um, Again, these, a lot of people don't understand. You could be worth 10 million bucks. You could have a net worth of 10 million bucks and go bankrupt. You could have a seven figure income and go bankrupt. It's about cash flow. And again, all in podcasts, full credit to those guys. Default to live. So, so you went from being all gas, the Fed has changed the market, 
and you're moving very quickly to default to live, which means you had to let people go. You shut down a business or two. Uh, and you're like, hey, the runway for this is going to be longer than maybe I was planning. Uh, so now you're default to live um, to kind of steal a phrase. Is that fair? So we were default alive, but like, I, I didn't care. Like, I, so we were default alive till we had some, okay. but like I was investing more. Okay. All or right. now, let's say we cut off those other business ventures because we were going for growth in like a different aspect. But now I was like, okay, this goes into the focus thing. Let's just productize more of what we're doing, simplify more of what we're doing and use the extra money for marketing just to gain market share there. And it eliminates the complexity of what's going on. Okay, I like that. You have- the social media company, the Airbnb company, you have like all these different things running. It takes a while to like productize that, get it all lined out, get an operator in place and like get that thing actually rolling. The, like let's say the market knows you, like all of those different things to where if we already have one, we know we have product market fit. We know we're really good at it. Why yeah. not just triple down on it? Use that excess okay. cash Agreed. to grow that and then we're good to go. Got it. So uh, I think this is something Grant Cardone talks about a lot, certainly in his older videos, basically do what you do, right? He was a car salesman and ultimately trained people, a car salesman, bust your butt and then save, 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 and then buy real estate, right? <laughs> right? Yeah. Absolutely. So is that kind of this, the same mindset? We're going to do what we do really well. We're going to double or triple down on it to make more. And then all that excess cash is going to go into storage units or apartments or whatever it is for you. Is that fair? Yeah. So do what we do build that up. We have the wholesale, we have the um, education, and then we have our virtual assistant company and then it go in storage. Like everything excess will go into storage or like that, right? But like that, that's all to go into. So really, so again, I want to- integrated just to be like, so when I say everything that I do is something that I do. And so it doesn't add complexity. Right. Like we, we wholesale- we add virtual assistants. We already wholesale so we can teach people how to wholesale. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so there isn't a whole lot of complexity there. Yeah. So I like this again. This is, this is what I was hoping for, right? Entrepreneur, all gas growing really kind of it, a year ago, you were adding kind of complimentary, but lack, you know, your focus got a little oh, distracted yeah. head count for growth. Now fed pivots default alive. You're like, hey, let's focus, let's concentrate, let's make sure. Because for me, I was telling people, you've got to survive this, right? So families, you've got to make hard decisions, right? I talked with Brian Lebo, for example, again, the broker in Vegas. And he's like, got rid of my third car, got rid of this, got rid of that. Because again, he went through the 06 crash. He's been in Vegas his whole life, I think. And he's like, hey, I got rid of all my cars last time. I traded down from a, a 550 Mercedes to a Toyota or a Lexus something. and he's doing it again. Right. So again, even family's got to be default alive, reduce expenses. So you can have more disposable income. So you can invest, you exactly. get wealthy in recessions. I want market share. Right. And so that's where all of the excess cash is going in marketing because we know some other people won't make it. Exactly. We know a lot of people won't make it. We're going to gain that market share and then still capitalize and then thrive afterwards. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, again, I'm not big in the crypto world, but some, I think it was, Binex or whatever it is, they took their Bitcoin trading to zero, which is going to hurt Coinbase and Robinhood. Again, this is about being alive. And it's some people, and this is what uh, Matt, the mortgage guy on Wednesday on my channel said, I think it was UWM. They're basically selling mortgages at zero profit because they're just going to strangle their competition. Yeah. Like and, if you can do it, dude, and like weather the storm, strangle the competition again, where we talk about runway to where you can operate at a really, really low margin and you still feel comfortable doing that because you know like hey six months worth we're good mm -hmm. that's a really really good place to be in mm -hmm. and then you can weather that storm and then hopefully you can operate a little bit more and then you can just keep gaining and gaining and gaining and gaining yeah so this is your first recession as a ceo is that fair yeah when you look at this and again if you don't know totally cool but when you're looking out there are you like hey, we, we you know we've got two hard years ahead of us or do you not think about that so i don't feel educated enough to call two hard years. I know it's okay. here, but I operate as if it's here. Okay. And then operate lean and take market share. And then when, if, if it comes out, when it comes out. Okay. I like that. If we crush now, we always crush, right? Got if you can make money now, I, I will make money at the top. And so if I can crush now consistently, okay. it doesn't matter how long it lasts. I like that. See, that's why I love talking to you. Uh, so when, so 
as you go through this, a lot of your competition and others, as we've said, won't survive because I, and again, there are people in the real estate industry that got just flat out lucky the last couple of years. They won't be around. There'll be less wholesalers, less agents, less flippers, um, less of pretty much everything. Uh, so how do we take it? How do you as an entrepreneur take advantage of that? Is it just by being focused, doubling down and increasing marketing? You're going to increase marketing while others are probably cutting it, I'm guessing. Yeah, because that well, I was talking on our podcast on mine. I was like, the number one thing that I really messed up on is during COVID, I pulled back a lot. Yeah, we started call magicians, but I pulled back on my wholesale marketing, mm. where in all reality, I should have been buying more rentals. Like if I, I should have just bought two rentals, it would have made me a million dollars, right? Like if right. Like I could have made not a million, but let's say I went and bought that year five rentals. I could have made 500K in refinances. Yeah, Easy. exactly. Easy. Yeah. And we know somebody in the market that did that. I bought stuff and did that. So yeah, I mean, it, yeah. Exactly. Like 100 grand appreciation. You buy in 20, you refi out 22 lifetime low rates. It would have been easy. I get it. Okay. Yeah. And what is your podcast? Because it, it is something I look forward to every Friday uh, that I'm a part of. What, what is it for the folks? The Winning Move Podcast. And Stratton, where can people find you besides there? Instagram is probably the best place at Strat Daddy. Awesome. Thanks, buddy. I look forward to episode number two. Thanks, Mike.